I recently bought this Laguna 1216. I've been happily turning on a Pyromatic 3520B for 11 years. Not planning on getting rid of it. I really like it. It's been a, a great, great lathe. But I decided I'd get a smaller lathe to supplement it for uh, wood turning instruction and also for uh, turning smaller, smaller projects. Buying a lathe uh, for a beginning wood turner is a major decision and there's a lot of factors that go into it. I want to share with you my recent experiences, both pros and, and cons, in purchasing this and using this Laguna. There's several good choices out there in the 12-inch uh, MIDI arena, as I uh, showed in an earlier uh, video. But I want to show you the factors. I want to review this Laguna 1216 features with you and the factors that, that won me over. Hi y'all, I'm Mike Peace and I'm passionate about wood turning and I'm here to share with you tips, tricks, and techniques to help you become a better, better wood turner. If this is what you're interested in, you know, consider subscribing and, hit, and hitting the notification bell button so you won't miss future videos. And a point I'd like to make clear is I bought this lathe from a local woodcraft store. I have no business relationship uh, with either Laguna or Woodcraft and I'm get, not getting compensated in any form or fashion uh, by either one of them for this, uh, this video review. I started out with a little Jet Mini 10 inch with a half horsepower motor. It was uh, fairly lightweight. That's a plus if you're slipping it in and out of a mobile home uh, or to, to demos, but otherwise uh, uh, the 12 inch lathes are, are much better. 12 inch capacity is a good size for, uh, for a full range of wood turning projects and, and for, for teaching. The factors that, that I looked at uh, were primarily I wanted a variable speed it needed to be uh, a horsepower. It needed to be affordable. Uh, there are a lot of good lathes out there that cost more money. Uh, Sam Angelo is real happy with his 12 inch uh, one way, but I felt like that was out, outside of my, my budget. Uh, there are larger lathes out there, uh, 14 inch in the midi range, that uh, they cost more, but frankly I wanted, I didn't need that capacity and I wanted a um, smaller, smaller foot, footprint. Uh, examples of lathes that fall in that category are certainly the uh, Robust Scout, which is a very nice lathe, but again, it's got a bigger foot, footprint. The uh, Record Carnet Herald, which my club won, I did a video on that, uh, also a very nice uh, lathe in that 14 inch capacity, but again, a little larger footprint, larger capacity than I needed. I wanted a high quality fit and finish. I didn't want any of these uh, cheap uh, Chinese or Taiwanese uh, knockoff types of lathes. Uh, I'm not knocking Harbor Freight. If that's what it takes to get you started, uh, go for it. But for what my purpose uh, was, I want something, something nicer. And this thing has a very nice fit and finish. One thing in common on almost all 12 inch uh, MIDI lathes, they all have the one inch by eight spindle. They all have a Morse taper. Uh, number two Morse taper on the tailstock and, and the headstock. Uh, they all just about all have a one inch, one inch motor. They have similar capacity, although they vary. Some are larger than others, and, and I frankly I chose one with a with the smallest range between centers, uh, with 15 and a half inches is is what this will handle. Besides the overall appearance, I think one of the things that caught my attention most was this one inch tool post. If you compare the tool posts, a 1 inch versus a 5 eighths typical of the mid, as you can see, there's substantial uh, difference. Also, the tool rests that generally come with most midi lays tend to be uh, quite a bit flimsier, uh, such, as, such as this one. It also doesn't have this, this clamping mechanism. It uses, it uses a locking mechanism that basically drives this pin in here and it just doesn't hold it nearly as securely as this this clamp. The other feature that really caught my attention which I just love the large digital readout the very beefy uh, variable speed controls uh, almost all the minis have a forward and reverse so that's not an issue but the start and stop button very nice. Another feature I like is the easy belt changes even on on variable speed lays uh, you have several pulley ranges. Most of them generally uh, have three three pulleys like this one, but the the ranges are shown right here. You just flip this this cam lock lever. You can also use it comes with a bar to 
that's used uh, for either removing your uh, face plate, which I'll go into this handle later, or it, it can used to be extended this this lever, but it just makes it really easy to take the pressure off to change the, the belt speed. It also uses a very heavy duty uh, poly, poly uh, groove, groove belt and then you just flip that back into into position and it's and it's ready to go. I had this spindle adapter to use on a larger larger chuck, so let me take that off. I love this smooth hand well with a large knob on it, makes it very easy. Uh, I like this little holder here for the uh, oh it's got it by the way it does have a self-ejecting tailstock. Got this nice holder to put these uh, drive center and and uh, live live center in. One of the things I, d I don't like about it, but it's kind of a nit. It doesn't have any etchings here uh, that shows you the depth that you you might be drilling if you do use this for for drilling. But it locks down very securely. This slides very smoothly. I did have an initial issue I call customer service about. Uh, I would slide it to this point and then it got very, very stiff and I had to use both hands to, to, to push it in. Uh, and they got back to me very quickly. They offered to send me a new tail stock, but they said they checked another model and it had a similar, similar issue. But it turns out uh, there is no play in this thing. It's machined so tightly that uh, there were a few... Uh, thousandths of an inch difference here in the middle where it got a little tighter and all I had to do was take some 600 grit on a piece of paper and just a couple of minutes of polishing on the inside now it just slides exactly the way I would, I would expect it to. Uh, in terms of the one of the tests when you buy a lathe you like to see the tailstock spindle and the the drive center uh, match up and this one this one matches matches perfectly uh, so I like that. Now one of the features of this lathe that makes it very attractive to a lot of people, it, it doesn't appeal to me that much, you can put a 10 inch bed extension which comes at a pretty reasonable price. It's $150 and that also adds uh, a, a knuckle spacer that allows to uh, uh, to move the uh, banjo and, and tool rest into position to turn a much much larger bowl up to 16 inches. Let me show you what that amounts to. With those options you could turn out turn outboard on this side by putting your your chuck or faceplate uh, on instead of this hand wheel and you could turn large platter such as this 14 inch platter. You could turn a bowl uh, up to the size of this which is uh, uh, 15, 15 inches which is larger than I, I turn. I've only turned a few of these and have no interest in turning large ones, but it may be an, uh, a feature that's very nice for folks that might occasionally want to turn something a little bit larger. I wanted a very small footprint, so this has this lathe has one of the smallest footprints out there for a mini lathe, a little bit over 29 inches. Now, on the flip side of that, that does reduce your capacity between centers. In this case, they state it's 15 and a half. Looks to me like it'd be closer to 14 inches. Personally, I don't see that as a problem for, for how I'm going to be using it, but you can also extend it uh, by 10 inches uh, by adding an extension bed rest uh, to the tailstock side of the lathe. It's the same tailstock, uh, same bed extension you would use on the left side of the lathe for outboard turning, and it's at a very reasonable price of $150, which includes the, the extension uh, for the uh, tool, tool post to allow you to turn off board. A couple of other cons, or it might be cons to other folks. The threaded hole in the base, if you wanted to mount this on another base uh, permanently, you'd have to come up from the bottom and match those holes exactly. Uh, frankly, I just don't see that as a big deal. The one and a half inch cups they have here are fairly, fairly large and, and robust and uh, give it a very uh, good surface on a flat uh, bench top, so I haven't had any problem with just using these these rubber cups. Another kind of I'd, I'd say a knit is a knockout bar, which I discussed in another video. It's got the, the tiny, tiny little little one inch knob on it, but uh, I showed how you could re replace that in another another video with a larger larger knob. 
uh, no big deal. Um, the other item I showed in, a, in another video, how you could remove the hand wheel and uh, replace it with one you make of your own, which makes it a lot more, more functional. I love the beefy. Uh, another plus is this cone design, which makes it a little easier to get in behind a, uh, the back side of a bowl if, if that's the way you turn. Reading from the manual, it says, by no means is this an introductory lathe. This is a small profile lathe made for professionals who favor the smaller projects. And I find that to be a pretty good description and, and fits me well. I love the beefy uh, uh, control levers to tighten the, the banjo and the uh, tailstock. Uh, they both got rubber on them. They're very good size. They lock very well with a, a cam lock. Uh, type of action. It's got a very effective spindle lock. You have to hold it in there uh, for it to work. You take your finger off, it comes off. One of the uh, points I'd want to drive home is getting a 12 inch, uh, quality 12 inch midi lathe doesn't necessarily mean you're compromising except on capacity. And that may not be a compromise. 90% of the things I turned could be turned easily on, the, on this lathe. And after turning with two weeks, and I've turned uh, knobs and uh, a couple of boxes and, and a bowl, the experience with it is every bit as good as, as the experience I get with turning on my Pyromatic. It's just, it's just, uh, it's different. It, it's smaller, everything is closer, uh, easier to move, and uh, tailstock is easy to, uh, to take off. The banjo is easier to move because it's, it's lighter. It's very substantial working within the capacity it's designed for. One horsepower motor is, is plenty of power for what you're going to be doing on this size lathe, so I want you to keep that in mind. Uh, the need to go up to a bigger lathe is really there only if you feel like you've got to be turning uh, 16, 18, 20 inch uh, uh, bowls and, and, and platters or, uh, or big hollow forms that require more power and capacity than, than you'd get from a mini lathe. Any of y'all have this lathe or one of the other lathes I might have mentioned, feel free to uh, tell us about your favorite uh, uh, feature or at least like feature in the in the comments comments below. Uh, I mentioned I did a couple of videos on on these mods for the hand wheel and, and the knob. Uh, you can click on on those to get access to those. Y'all stay safe. Come on back here.